Hey y'all, it's Fan. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about stuff like sewing, fashion, and lifestyle. And today is another video about sewing. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you will know whenever I post new videos. The goal is a video a week and hold me to it y'all. I'm trying. It's a lot, but I'm trying. I'm trying to grow my sewist tribe. But today we are talking about accessories. I made a tote bag, circle tote bag-ish um, that I actually saw someone talking about on TikTok a very long time ago. I bought the pattern and never had the time to use it. Whenever I do fashion shows, I always want to do like accessories to go with the show and it just never happens. But I did a benefit show this past weekend, which I'm hoping to do a recap soon. Um, and I only did five pieces. I tried to keep it simple. It was just fun. It was for cancer survivors. You know, they had a little runway show for them. And I actually did finally make an accessory. I made a circle bag. Um, I got the pattern off of Etsy. It was super cheap and they have discount codes all the time. It was really easy to make and it came out super cute. And I ended up donating the bag for a raffle uh, during the event. So let's get into the tutorial. Let's get into all the details and talk about the fabrics. I found some really cool and car fabrics for this show. But today we're going to focus on the bag. So let's get into it. Here is the bag. I got it off of Etsy. It was a little less than $7 when I bought it. But let's get into the fun part. So I only used two pattern pieces, the shell and the gusset at the bottom of the bag. I cut four pieces out of the front and back of the bag. So two for the front, two for the back. And then I decided to interface them. This here is like the bottom gusset of the bag. It came as a whole pattern, but I like to cut stuff on the fold. So I folded it in half and cut it. I am using cotton Ankara fabric and it still had the sticker on it because these were scraps. So, you know, you have to really press hard to get that sticker off. So luckily it came off clean. I was so excited about that. And then I just applied the interfacing to um, two of the four pieces and to the bottom uh, gusset, which only had two pieces as well. There are notches, one at the bottom and two at the sides. So I, you know, marked my notches. I did interface the gusset the as, well, as, well, as well as well as the front and back pieces. The first, the first step, step was, was to sew this sew like square where the opening these is, corners here, so that you can clean where finish there's a cutout the opening. So you can see here where cut I am the clean, edges, finishing. clip it so that it's nice and neat, and then you're going to flip it around so that it is clean finished. There are no wrong sides of your fabric showing. I put in some pins just to hold it, give it a good press, and then put a top stitch along the edges and all around the outside of this circle piece. And when I say this bag was super easy, like there's nothing crazy about sewing this. So once you get the, you know, stitch together just to hold them so they don't slide apart for both pieces, so you're gonna do this step twice, it was rather easy from here. You are going to repeat kind of the same process with the bottom gusset. You're going to, uh, uh, so that edge and then clip the corner so that it will turn nicely you have to do this on both sides and then once you have those edges sewn together and clipped in the curve you're going to do the same thing flip it so there are no wrong sides showing and then pin and top stitch and then you're also going to stitch down the long edges of this pattern piece just so that it's easy to sew you don't have to worry about edges not matching or something slipping out it just makes life a little easier. So I slowed it down here just for you to see a bit. You want to flip that part inside out so that wrong sides are together. And then you're going to top stitch it closed and then top stitch along the long sides of this pattern. Once we get through, uh, you know, getting this bottom gusset piece together in my dress head, this was a really quick bag, so there's not a lot to explain. We are going to pin that gusset along the round edge of the bag. And you can see here, I already have one side pinned. Um, you want to match your notches at the center. The gusset at the bottom also had notches at the center and at the sides for easy alignment. I actually went ahead and just pinned both sides. So you'll see me here matching my notch. That's for the bottom. And then we're going to match the notches at the side on both sides. 
and then I literally sewed one side and sewed the other. This typically isn't how I work. I like to do them one at a time. But again, I did sew this the day of the fashion show. So I'm like, y'all, I have to get this done because I've already committed myself and spent a lot of time saying that I was going to do this. So here we are. Uh, so once you get all the pins in, you want to pin in between the notches. Everything lined up pretty easy for me. At one point, I thought maybe it needed to stretch a little bit and the interfacing wasn't allowing it to stretch, but it actually worked out fine. I didn't have any major gaps or anything like that. And I'm forever poking myself with these pins, y'all. Forever poking myself. I keep saying I need to use clips, but the pins is just so much easier, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I don't know. I be trying, y'all, but I just can't get with the clips. But once it's pinned, then we are ready to sew. So we're going to head over to the machine. I sewed a half an inch seam allowance along the edge of both sides. It gets a little bit tricky once you get to the top because that area is a little bit smaller. But this is what it looks like all pinned. And I just head to my machine, machine and make sure that you're moving the bottom of the bag out the way because you don't want to sew through the entire bag. That would suck. Um, but yeah, really easy just sewing around the curve for both sides. And don't we love this print? It's almost like a sunflower, but it's not really a sunflower. So this is a pattern I used, but I didn't really use. It's for you to cut your own binding, but I chose to just use regular binding, but I used the pattern to tell me how long of a piece of binding that I needed. If I can talk, Lord. So I triple checked my length, you know, measure twice, cut once. You're going to sew your binding together to make it a circle. So you'll see here, I opened up the binding and I'm going to take it to my machine to sew it together. So binding, this is what it looked like sewn. I put the binding at the bottom of the bag. I did realize I was doing this wrong. But again, y'all, I call myself a sloppy sewist in my head. I can sew it. It's not going to be politically correct the way it should be sewn. But I started at the bottom and pinned up both sides of the bag. You're going to have extra strap hanging at the top of your bag. That's okay because it's going to become your handle. So I like that I used this contrast fabric because it made it easier to show you guys. Also to note, the binding goes on the outside. This is the outside of your bag that you're working on. You're going to encase your seam allowance inside this binding. So you have to do it to both sides, pinning the binding to uh, the edge of your seam allowance or to your seam and then, you know, preparing to sew. The way you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to open your binding and put the edges together, but I didn't do that. So I'm going to sew all the way around, attaching the binding to the bag. And then once you get to the top of your bag, you're going to stop. I decided to trim the excess fullness there because I did tell you guys I decided to interface this. And it just got thick and I don't like that. So I trimmed it away. And now in typical binding construction you're going to fold the other half of the binding over your seam allowance uh, encasing it inside of the binding i've been researching different ways to get the good angle with the camera with trying to film sewing videos i haven't figured out the, the angles yet but i'm working on it i am forever hitting that dang tripod so you see my camera shaking it's because i hit it but back to the binding the binding, <clears throat> you're going to fold it over and continue to stitch it down. Once you get to the edge of your bag, you're now going to continue to sew your straps. I like to start at the bottom of one strap and sew my way all the way around in a circle. You got to ensure that you're getting the binding folded in half and you're just top stitching it closed for the handle of this bag. So I kind of had to slow down a bit to make sure that the binding was even and that it wasn't like overlapping i am a sloppy sewist but i don't like that i want it to be neat so i had to stop and take my time to um make sure that binding was being closed but that literally was all it took for the bag y'all it was super super easy super cute can be made in any colors definitely make one thank you all so much for following me on youtube thank you so much for watching my videos please like and subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend to come sewing with tay on my youtube channel let me know your thoughts and opinions they have some really cute bags in that store 
So I think I might do another. They have like a triangle ruffle bag and I'm like, it's giving things that I feel like I need to do. So check out that page. They do have a YouTube page and you can see them on YouTube as well. But thank you all for following me. Thank you for watching. Until next time.